meat and protein intake is very controversial when it comes to longevity. Recently, there's been a lot of talk about a 2022 study that looked at 175 contemporary populations and the association between total meat intake and life expectancy. So in this video, I'm going to take a look at this study. So make sure you subscribe and hit the like button for more future videos about similar topics. So the title of the study is Total Meat Intake is Associated with Life Expectancy, a cross-sectional data analysis of 175 contemporary populations. What they basically found was was that meat intake was positively correlated with life expectancies. So here's the main figure from the study. As meat consumption increased kilogram per person per year, then child mortality under the age of five decreased and average life expectancy increased. They did control for a lot of the variables that could confound the results, such as total calorie intake, GDP of the region, urbanization, and obesity. However, this study only looked at child mortality and life expectancy at birth and life expectancy younger than five years of age. Child mortality is one of the biggest things that has been historically reducing average life expectancy across the entire world. When you look at the trend line of the average life expectancy across the entire world at the 18th to 19th century was around 40 years of age. Now, this result wasn't necessarily caused by the fact that people just live shorter. It was caused by the high rate of infant mortality, which brought down the average life expectancy. If you have a high rate of infant mortality, then the average life expectancy at birth is obviously going to be smaller. So just by reducing infant mortality, you can see a linear increase in average life expectancy at birth. But it doesn't really tell you much about what your life expectancy is going to be at the upper ages, like when you're 50, 60 or 70 years old. And what's more, the life expectancy at birth is greatly affected by GDP and the wealth of the country, as well as meat intake. When you look at the amount of daily meat consumption per person, then you can see that all of the countries that eat the highest amount of meat or 165 grams per day or more are concentrated in developed countries and high income countries, whereas regions with lower meat consumption, less than 100 65 grams and even below 40 grams, then those countries are concentrated in Africa and other developing countries. Now, the study did say that it controlled for GDP per country, but it didn't control for GDP per capita, which reflects the average wealth of a household, not just the country. This means that households that are able to afford more meat are also wealthier, and the households that are wealthier generally have higher life expectancy as well. If you don't believe me, then here's a paragraph from the study. GDP GDP may be a comprehensive life expectancy contributor. For instance, populations with greater GDP may have higher meat affordability, better medical service, and better education level. Each factor may contribute to life expectancy in its unique way, but it's impossible to collect all these data and include them as a potential separate confounders in the data analysis to remove their competing effects on life expectancy. And I'm not saying that higher meat consumption would have any adverse effects on health. Like I myself eat meat. I'm actually probably in the higher category of meat consumption above 160 grams per day as the other high income countries. So in the end, this study found that regions with more access to meat and more consumption of meat generally are going to be healthier and with higher GDP per capita, which itself is the biggest predictor of life expectancy. You can just look at the relationship between life expectancy and health expenditure per capita. High income countries like Japan, Norway and Germany spend a lot of money on their health care and they also have one of the highest life expectancies in the world. On the other hand, lower income countries like Niger, Ethiopia, Eritrea have lower GDPs, they're poorer income countries, and they also have lower life expectancy. Coincidentally, these are also the regions with the lowest consumption of meat. When you look at the list of countries with the highest meat consumption per capita, then they're all high income countries. And these countries also have one of the highest life expectancies in the world. On the other hand, the countries with the lowest meat consumption per capita are India, Bangladesh, Ethiopia, Nigeria, Mozambique, etc. These are all developing countries. And countries with the lowest life expectancy are Chad, Nigeria, South Sudan, Somalia, etc. These are all developing countries. So there is a direct association between the wealth of a country and its meat consumption. And there is a direct association between the wealth of a country, its GDP per capita and its life expectancy. The richer the country, the more developed the country, the higher its life expectancy is going to be. And generally, the more meat they're able to afford. And by far, the biggest predictor of life expectancy across the board is going to be your GDP, not the meat consumption. One of the longest life expectancies in the world is in Hong Kong, 85.49 years as of 2021. But they're also the largest consumer of meat per capita, 138 kilograms per year as of 2020. That's roughly 350 grams of meat per person per day. You could easily make the link that a higher meat consumption 
is what increases the life expectancy in Hong Kong. However, based on that logic, the United States should also be in the top three of the longest living countries in the world, because the US is the second largest consumer of meat per capita, with 124 kilograms of meat per year per person. However, the United States is 58th in the ranking of life expectancy across the countries. Of course, there's a lot of problems with the United States and its healthcare system, but it would be still false to conclude that the reason Hong Kong lives the longest is because they're eating the most meat. The increase in Hong Kong's life expectancy has been studied and it's attributed mostly to wiping out diseases of poverty while seeing lower rates of chronic diseases such as cardiovascular disease and cancer. Hong Kong also reports the lowest smoking related mortality out of any high income country. Furthermore, Hong Kong has a very high GDP per capita. It's even bigger than Germany's and the government spends 17% of their GDP on healthcare. Another discrepancy is Switzerland with a life expectancy of 83.85, which puts it at the fourth longest living country in the world. However, Switzerland's meat consumption is half of Hong Kong's, 67.54 kilograms per year. Switzerland is the 50th meat consuming country in the world. So overall, this data suggests that the total amount of meat consumed per capita doesn't have a significant effect on the maximum life expectancy of a country. What determines the life expectancy of a country is its healthcare, its GDP per capita, how wealthy the country is, and its healthcare system. Hong Kong has a very good healthcare system, they have a pretty high GDP, and the population in Hong Kong is generally also healthier by avoiding the chronic diseases. However, higher meat consumption might play a role in reducing child mortality and reducing infant mortality, because the country is with the highest child mortality rates generally consume less meat but there's also the connection that they also have a lower GDP and they have worse healthcare system so overall I'm not saying that meat consumption is necessarily bad for your health or reducing the life expectancy we don't have evidence for that because you know in the example of Hong Kong they consume the most meat in the world and they have a pretty high life expectancy but there's also the issue that if you do consume large amounts of meat like the United States then that doesn't correctly correlate over to longer life expectancy and many of the other countries that have a very long life expectancy like Japan and Switzerland consume actually a lot less meat. But Japan and Switzerland are very wealthy. They have one of the highest GDPs per capita in the world. They have one of the best healthcare systems in the world. And those people have better access to medical healthcare. So to bring some sort of a conclusion, the biggest predictor of life expectancy at birth is generally going to be GDP per capita, how wealthy the country and the people are, and the access to healthcare. Meat consumption, the amount of meat people eat, is generally like a proxy of the wealth of the country, how much GDP per capita those people have. Wealthier people can afford more meat and because they're wealthier they get access to better healthcare which then translates over into longer life expectancy. But do you want to add healthy years to your life? If yes then I'm looking for more people who want to increase their health span. If you're interested then email me the word health to info at and I'll send you the details. But other than that thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like, subscribe, notification bell as well. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.